Well, for more on this, let's talk to Neil Clark, who's a journalist focusing on the uh, Middle East. Uh, we've just heard in the last few minutes that um, the Muslim Brotherhood's headquarters <laughs> has been stormed in Cairo. If President Morsi doesn't step down, and he has made it clear he won't, what do you think will happen next? Well, Andrew, I think he's got to step down. I think let's just pause and reflect on what we're witnessing now in Egypt. We are witnessing the largest anti-government demonstrations in history. And full credit to RT, because RT is about the only major news channel that's given this amazing event the coverage it deserves. We're talking about one quarter of, of, of Egypt that are actually out on the streets protesting. And he can't stay on. It's quite clear that the people have had more than enough of him. He's been an utter and total disaster in the year he's been in power. He's broken every single promise that he, that he made when he was elected. And it's time for him to go. If he doesn't go, I think civil war could happen because, you know, people are extremely angry. And uh, they're angry about what happened in 2011 because they wanted radical change in 2011. They didn't just want Mubarak to be replaced by another pro-US uh, Western puppet. And that's what's happened. There hasn't been any real changes to the economy. People are getting poorer. Unemployment's going up and up and up. And people want real change. They're not going to be content with just another US stooge in power in Cairo. Do you think there's any regrets about ousting Mubarak at all, <laughs> considering you know, the I've... state the country's in now? If anything, the situation's got worse than under Mubarak. Unemployment has risen since 2011. Youth unemployment has risen. Bread prices have risen. Electricity prices have risen. The average Egyptian is worse off now than he was two years ago. And this is all to do with the fact that it wasn't a real change in 2011. What we had was popular uprising against Mubarak, but the US and the Western allies came in there and took control of the situation, engineered a result that was good for them. And it's quite clear that this is not good for the majority of Egyptians. They want radical changes. They want a change in economic policies. They want jobs. They want bread. They want cheap fuel prices. They're not getting it under Morsi. The situation has actually got worse. You said, in your opinion, that um, Morsi has no choice but to step down. But if he did, who's the alternative candidate? Who's the new leader? Is there anyone viable waiting well, in the wings? It's up to the Egyptian people to decide that by having a new election. And I, I don't take the line that he, his rule is valid because he won the election a, a year ago. He's broken every single promise. Everything he said, we could talk for six or seven hours on all the promises that he's broken and the opposite things he's done. And, and, and really, it's up to the Egyptian people. It's not up to the US and the, uh, to, to say who runs Egypt. And the interesting thing is, is the silence from the Western leaders about these massive protests. These are the biggest protests in history. Can you imagine if 7 million people in Venezuela, that's 25% of the Venezuelan population, were out on the streets protesting against the government there? We would have President Obama, we would have William Hague, John Kerry, etc., saying Maduro must resign. There's silence on Egypt. There's the biggest demonstrations in history against the government, and the West is saying nothing. And that proves us one thing, that the change we had in 2011 was merely a cosmetic change. Nothing changed, really. And this is a real revolution now we're witnessing in Egypt, and the people must have their say. And Morsi says he will not step down. So what do you think he will do next to hold on to power? Well, I think he's emboldened by, like Erdogan in Turkey, and the fact that the US doesn't want him to leave power. The Muslim Brotherhood and the US are in this together. Uh, the Muslim Brotherhood is helping the US achieve strategic objectives in the Middle East. The last thing the US wants is a socialistic government, a sort of Nasserite government in Egypt that would renationalize, change economic policies, uh, stand up for Egyptians' interests and for the interests of ordinary people. So he feels that the West are behind him, like Erdogan, but the numbers here are bigger than in Turkey. Uh, Erdogan does have more support in Turkey than Morsi has in Egypt, I think, and, and the anger is out there. 20 million people on the streets. They're not going to leave. They're not going to go back home. They've got nothing to lose, Andrew, because youth unemployment is, is going up all the time. People haven't got jobs. They haven't got bread. They haven't got food. They've got nothing to lose here, and they're desperate, and I think Morsi has to accept that and to realise, you know, the last year has been a disaster for Egypt. We need to have a proper radical changes in this country. You say they have nothing more to lose, but potentially, couldn't the economy actually get worse if there is another revolution? No, I, I don't think it can get much worse. Morsi has just continued with the flawed policies of Mubarak, the Washington consensus policies of more privatisation, cutting uh, uh, benefits, etc. I mean, uh, cut, cutting subsidies on basic foodstuffs. The poor have got poorer. We need, in Egypt, a radically new economic model. The model that Egypt followed from 1952 to 1970 under Nasser was hugely successful for the majority of Egyptians. That was the fastest rise in living standards for ordinary people. Nasser was a great leader for Egypt in terms of ordinary Egyptians. And, you know, that, they are the kind of policies that Egypt needs to follow now and to break fully, 100%, with the flawed policies of the Mubarak era. OK, thank you, Neil. We'll do, we do have to leave it there. That's uh, journalist Neil Clark, live from Oxford. Thank you.